guys it's Jim and this is Jim's fix-it shop and we're gonna go out and finish up this installing a new engine on my snapper with a few issues uh, I'm gonna show you how I installed the muffler and how to wire the stator to your battery so you'll charge your battery up which mine's not doing right now cuz well, I haven't got that far so let's go out and take a look and I'll show you what I mean. All right, I hope I can stay out of your way. I can't really see the screen on the camera, so I don't know. It's going to get noisy, but I want it. Here's your stator wires. I've already cut this one off, because that's the wire you want to hook to the key to short out the engine so the engine quits. Now I have a red and an orange wire left. One is a DC output off the stator. One is an AC output off the stator. The DC output, you want to hook to this wire I just put on to charge the battery. The AC output is supposed to go to the headlights and whatever other lights you have on the machine to keep the battery charged. Or to Sorry, to keep the headlights running. I always hook the headlight into the battery. As if I'm out in the woods dumping the bags in the engine stalls or I just want to shut it off, my light will keep working. If you hook it to this AC lead, the light's going to quit as soon as the engine does. So I'm going to fire this up. It's going to be a little noisy, but I want you to see the readings on the meter so you can tell the difference between the AC and the DC side of the stator. Let me turn this thing on. We're going to set this on DC. It's going to get noisy. Take your earbuds out. And yes, <laughs> I haven't <it in> parked. <laughs> Players falling down. So what we want to do is this is the wire I just hooked to the battery. I'm going to run it back and tie it into here. The orange wire or the AC lead, I'm not even going to use it. So let me hook this up and then we'll go on to the muffler issue that I've had. Okay, now we're on the other side of the tractor. If you remember, I couldn't get the muffler in, it's probably still hot, because it hit this post that holds on my bagger. So the little exhaust pipe that came with it was about, well, I don't know, inch and a half long. It fit in here. I took the front flange, the flange that goes on the muffler, and I cut them off of this piece of pipe. This is what I made up out of a piece of old broom handle I guess and you can see I made it too short the first time so I added a piece on to it until I got it fit in there so it looked like it was about what I wanted then I just took some old black pipe I found laying around took it to work ran it through the bandsaw and I cut these angles at the same length as these are I tack welded the flanges on and made sure it fit pretty good. Took it over to my son-in-law and I had him weld them. He's a lot better welder than I am. He does a nice job. 
Then the original bracket that's on here that bolted on the back of the engine, I took out one of the screws or one of the bolts that holds the cover onto the engine. And I was going to make up a nice fancy bolt to go in here because these are shoulder bolts. And I said, well, everybody can't do that. So what I did is I took a piece of quarter inch pipe. Uh, probably about a three inch long nipple. I cut the threads off both ends. I went and got a piece of quarter inch threaded rod. I lucked out these were standard threads. They weren't metric. Screwed the threaded rod into the block. I put the uh, piece of pipe on. I bolted the muffler on and put a washer and a self-locking nut on it. I'm trying to figure out how to do this stuff so everybody can do it. Well, the bottom uh, without a bunch of specialty tools. So that's it. This thing is hooked up, it's done, and I've been mowing with it. Okay guys, uh, I guess I'm, I gotta change this. That looks a little better, I'm in frame now. It's hard for me to see with my camera turned sideways so it's good for you guys it gives me a, a lot smaller window where I got to stand. Um, I hope you enjoyed putting a new engine on your snapper. Uh, I've got a book around here somewhere. I got to tell you where I buy these engines from. Um, my engine did not come with a voltage regulator slash um, diode. So I called the company, uh, Briggs & Stratton. I have their phone number here. I'll put it in the description below. Real nice bunch of people answered all my questions. I gave them the model number of that engine, the type number and code number, and they emailed me an entire book on that engine. Every part and a breakdown of all the parts, numbers, and everything you'd need to get a part for this. So once I had this, I called them back about the regulator so I could hook this thing up to my battery. And I got a hold of tech support. Just ask the lady that answers the phone. you got to go through one of these stupid menus. And he told me that uh, on this particular stator, you didn't need a voltage regulator like on my bigger tractor. Uh, it's a very low output as far as amperage, but it does have like 17 volts output when it's running wide open. Uh, it was just idling out there. That's why the voltage was, what, about 7 or 9 volts. So you don't have to worry about boiling the battery by overcharging it. He said, just hook it up straight. Don't worry about it. Well, that saved me like 45 bucks. They wanted online for a voltage regulator for this thing. Now, the, uh, the muffler, that wasn't really too big of an issue. Uh, the whole thing wasn't all that bad. Um, do I think it was worth what I put into it as far as money and effort? Definitely. I called up a dealer in town that sells snappers, and they told me they can't get a 2016 snapper. They quit making them. She don't know if they're even going to build them next year. Uh, like I've said before, they had a lot of problems with the 2016s as far as uh, just breaking down. One dealer I talked to sold three. He took two back and gave them their money back for them. And he quit selling them until they, they fixed them. They re-engineered them. Yeah, and they made them into a piece of crap after... How many years of the best machine on the market then they do that uh, they do still sell the baggers she can get them the double bag is what I have it's got the dome top I like that much better than a single bag because when the bags get full then it fills up that top that's that big plastic dome then we open that up on the woods I just sweep that off and dump the bags that's like another bag 
But let me find this book out here someplace in this mess on where I get my engines from, and I'll tell you the name of the company. I'll be right back. Okay, I ran in and got the book. Where I buy my engines. Now, there's some criteria you have to meet for them to sell engines to you. The name of the company is Small Engine Distributors in Kansas City, Missouri. I'll put the name in the description and their phone number and you can call them up. You do have to be a licensed small engine repair service. I talked to the owner and he said all these little mom and pop repair places are falling by the wayside because of the big box stores. He says I won't sell to the big box stores. If you do notice, if you when you do get a book and you look in it, it'll have ads where it'll say uh, 840 engines to sell. If you buy five or sometimes ten or less, you can have them for say $85. If you buy ten or more, you're going to pay $120 for them because he knows these guys are picking them up just to resell. He said, that's not why I started this business, but I can't not sell to them. Uh, you have to have a license, a sales tax license, an active one, because I imagine they check, and you do have to be a small business repair facility. Um, like I said, I'll put the ad below and, and you can call them and talk to them yourself. Maybe you can wiggle your way in somehow. Um, back to do I think uh, this was worthwhile. Yes, I have a wonderful machine that's brand new. I did not paint it. I, I noticed a lot of you guys are painting yours. I found out in the, in the past when I paint them all up and, and tear them apart and sandblast them and paint them and rebuild them, then you're afraid to use them. <laughs> I like to use mine, so I don't paint them anymore. I just fix them. Um, you cannot buy a new snapper today. They quit making them. They had too many problems with them. You can still buy baggers. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was worth it. And if I had to do it again, I would. If I could find another one on Craigslist cheap, I might buy it and rebuild it and sell it. I don't know. But if you have any questions... If you've stuck out for this whole build, uh, good for you. <laughs> it's been interesting, <laughs> some parts. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Watch the whole series on rebuilding the snapper, rebuilding the engine, putting the engine on. And uh, if you have any questions, email me at jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. I I will call you. If you email me direct, give me your phone number and your state. I'm keeping track of how many states I touch. I'll call you up. I got two guys to call tonight as soon as I get done doing leaves. So I do get back with you. Uh, if something happens that I don't, email me again. I, I lost a couple emails on my goofy tablet. I touched the wrong button and it deleted them. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out if I can get them back or not, but... Anyway, uh, have fun, work safe, and we'll talk to you soon.